Chapter 4 New York, New York. It's a wonderful town. Something along the lines of an Oz without the music, but with lots of wizards and witches. Everyone's got a shtick. It's a city driven by money and powered by envy, so color it green. If you're looking for motives, it's one or the other, envy or money, or frequently both. So I thought about motives. Why steal a cat? I was back on chameleon and freezing my tail. Spike had gone south at the Beaumont Alley. Spike's got a roommate and has to get home before Donna the roommate arrives and goes ape, which is why he won't make it. Not as a dick. A successful detective is always a loner. He's one of those cats that survives on his own, without any roommates, without any strings. He keeps his own counsel and keeps his own score. He's at home in a world where he's always a stranger. It's never a picnic, this stranger's world. It's often tragic and sometimes funny, at least in the way of a horse's laugh or the raspberry sound of a Bronx cheer. But down these green streets a cat must go who is not himself green, who's experienced at his job and has a natural taste for the hunt. I was hunting a witness, and way out of luck. The street was empty, the houses were dark, and the shops were as closed as a principal's mind. I stopped in the sheltering cove of a doorway, the gypsy tea room and astral boutique, it said on the awning, and tried to get warm. I'd got to the corner of pork and chameleon. The rest of chameleon that blocked the north was just as deserted as everything south, and it looked as though pork was as quiet as ham. I turned and looked up at a sound from the window, the sound of a whisker that tickled a wall, and found myself staring at opaline eyes. They belonged to a calico stretched on the sill. She gestured, come here. I gestured, uh, how? And she flicked at the doorway that offered a wide and appealing mail slot. I jumped at the chance. Inside it was eerie. The walls, painted black, had the signs of the zodiac painted in gold, and a cluster of tables with the zodiac cloths. My hostess awaited me right near the slot. She inspected me coldly and nodded twice. You are wanting info, she said. Her accent was mildly Hungarian. Yep, that's a fact. Have a sit on the table, she said. I followed her up to a table and sat near a vase with some paper azaleas. She eyed me again. Her face wasn't young, but it seemed to be ageless. Her body was plump, and she'd lost a few teeth, but she didn't much smile, so it didn't much matter. Your name would be? Sam. She agreed with me. Yes, and you come to tea room, she noted. Late, but is better than Nitschke, so please to relax. Madame Lazanga is telling you all. Madame Lazanga? This would be me. I am delighted to meet you. Perhaps you could tell me. I already told you I am telling you all. I am revealing the secrets. I am spilling the beans. I am reporting whatever. I say what I see, and I see what I am saying. I nodded. Uh-huh. So my question is, why are you seeking a pious? I thought it over, which wasn't a help. Well, you got me stumped, lady. What's a post? A post's a post. I'm reading your paw. I'm telling you voyages, strangers, and money. I'm reading your nails, and I'm telling you love. Like a palmist for humans. 
a past for cats. I nodded politely. Except that my questions are more... Be silent, she said. Is Vibroxy. Madame Lazanga is going in trench. I beg your pardon? Madame Lazanga is closing her eyes, is pronouncing an oom. Um. Madame Lazanga was doing just that. What she meant by a trench, I decided, was trance, and she did it theatrically, humming an oom um, like a carnival diva at Carnegie Hall. She opened her eyes and said, Please to give paw. I decided to do it. I gave her my paw and I started to blather. I'm sure you can see I'm a private detective, I said. She nodded. A private detective is written like ink. It's the first thing I notice. She frowned at my paw with supreme concentration. And second to that, I'm seeking a kitten. A cuddly kitten. She tapped at my paw with a dagger-like nail. Here it says cuddly. She zigzagged her nail to the tip of my elbow. And here it says cute. You are truly amazing. She nodded. I know. And you've certainly noticed the kitten was stolen. You probably know it was done by a man who came out of the Beaumont... You're talking the gallery? I'm talking the gallery at 9.45. She looked up at me sharply, her jaw in a gape. But I actually saw this, with actual eyes. That's terrific, I blatted. No good Nick. She snapped. You are double no good, Nick. Get out of my house. She flung out her paws and displaced an azelia that flew off the table. But, madam, I said, I was hoping you'd seen it. Of course you would hope. But I am seeing in window, not seeing in paw. If I am seeing in window, I am not getting paid and you're not telling neighbors I'm wonderful smart, and I'm starving and dying, and this you would hope? You are triple no good, Nick. I gave her my paw. She suddenly brightened. You wish me to read? I would very much like it. She settled her rump on the zodiac table and took up my paw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see, here he is walking. He is holding a fuffle. A fuffle? A bag is a kind of bag. What you call it a fuffle. I said, you mean duffle? She peered at my paw. Here it looks like an F, she said, shrugging indifference. Is anyway yellow and jumping around. It goes wiggle and jiggle. He's giving it poch, and he's telling it poch? Punch? Punch, I said, nodding. Go on. So he's giving it poch, and he's telling it sha. So I'm thinking... Lazanga, what kind of crazy potches a fuffle and gives it a shaw? And I'm thinking, what's in it? I'm not thinking kitten, I'm thinking a devil. I am thinking a dog. But I'm now seeing kitten. I am now seeing cat, but it's little and tiny. I nodded. The man, did you see what he looked like? So, what's with the did? I am seeing this wonderful clear in the paw. Over here I see skinny, and here I see tall, and right over here I see smoking cigar. Bingo. If I'd had any doubts that the lady was riffing, I started believing. 
I prompted. Go on. Can you see what he's wearing? Is wearing peace coat and also Hotchkiss. I squinted. Peace? You know, like a sailor. A sailor boy jackal. The color of navel. A pea coat, I said. Nuh uh, nuh 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 uh. A jackal like this couldn't nobody make it from one single pea. It would take you a plateful. Madame Lazonka is telling you four hundred seventy peas. And what's with the uh, Vachkis? Up on his head like a little fadoodle. You make it from wool. Are you saying a watch cap? That's what I said. I have one other question. Then give other paw. What's the matter with this one? I already read. It's the end of the chapter. I took back my paw and selected another. Continue with ask. Did you see where he went to? Did, she said. Do. Madame Lozanka is seeing in pa. Madame Lozanka is seeing sailor boy turning the corner, is walking to pork, is Pasotsky by window, where beautiful cat being Madame Lozanka is sitting on sill and is seeing exactly. Exactly what? I was growing impatient. Is entering doorway. Is entering doorway of ear being hot. Can you say that in English? Doorway, she said, and put down my paw again. What did she mean? I looked up at the window and peered at the street, and then suddenly got it. Madam, you're swell. So what do I owe you? A fortune, she said. You could never afford it. You couldn't afford it if you're working tail off for seventy years. You can pay me in kindness. I certainly will. What kind of a kindness? A fellow like you has some hotsy and totsy society friends. And you can throw me some business. You're telling them, Visiting Madame Lozanga gives pieces of mind. I'll be happy to, madam. I leapt to the floor. But I have to be honest, my friends aren't rich. But I see you will meet some, she promised me. Soon. Three little princesses. One dozen paws. This is happening Sunday at possible noon, if you're living till Sunday, she added. Madam? But Madame Lizanga was back in her trench, and the sole explanation she offered was, Oom. Um.